Hello, my name is Kishwani. This K E S H W A N I Kishwani. We are here because we want to prepare for the GRE. We have been solving math problems out of this book here, the official guide to the GRE, the third edition. If you do not own this book already, purchase one immediately. You're going to need it. Today is our lesson number 159. Day, day, day 3000, day 3159, 3 is to signify the fact that we are in the third edition, third edition, day 159, we are in the process of solving problem from the practice test number 2 that you will find at the very end of the book on page number 487. Problem number 24 is what we are about to do, the penultimate problem, the An ultimate problem. Let's take a look at it. It says if x is less than y, if x is less than y and y in turn is less than 0, which of the following inequalities must be true? So let's take a look at the first one. First inequality that they give us is y plus 1 is less than x. And our job is to determine whether or not this inequality shows something that must be true. Then the key word here is must. In other words, we have to show that this inequality, whatever it is, has to be true, has to, has to true, has to hold at all times without any exception. Let's get going, shall we? The easiest, the quickest, the most economical way here is to simply plug in some numbers and see what happens. Let's plug in some numbers that work here. So we are told that x is less than y. So why don't we call them? And they and y in turn is less than zero. In other words, they are both negatives. So why don't we plug in negative half for x? and negative one quarter for y. And that would work. In this case, x is less than one quarter because we're sitting it here at the number line here. There's our zero, there's our negative one, there's our negative half, negative half, and there's our negative one quarter. And negative one quarter is y, and negative half is x, and you can see x is less than y. And you can also see that y is less than zero because zero is right here. I don't know why I had a need to actually show this to you, but anyway, let's get going, shall we? Let's get going. So y, y, which is negative one quarter plus one. Negative one quarter plus one is going to be positive three quarters. Positive three quarters, and our positive three quarters has to be less than x. Has to be less than x, and x is negative one half. X is negative one half. So is it is it true that positive 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 three quarter is less than negative one half? Of course not. Of course not. That's it. If you find one instance where A does not work, then of course it's ruled out. It doesn't matter if it works in, in 20,000 other situation. It has to work all the time. If you find one instance when it doesn't work, it's gone. Let's look at B. Let's take a look at B. B says y minus one has to, less, has to be less than x. Y y we have negative one quarter, so negative one quarter minus a one, minus a one, which is going to be negative, negative one and one quarter, and the question is, is this less than x, is this less than x, which is negative one quarter, and the answer is yes, this is true, this is true, because negative one quarter is right here, negative one and one quarter is going to fall somewhere here, as you can see, this, this quantity is less than that quantity right here. This is farther to the left. Farther, you understand? Farther. F-A-R. Farther. Don't say further to the left. People always say further in this context and they are wrong. It is farther. Farther. Far. Farther. Farthest. Which is a superlative. My house is far from here. Should we go to Michael's house? Are you kidding me? Michael's, Michael's house is even farther. Well, let's go to... Mary's house. Oh, no, no. Her house is the farthest. Do you understand? We all live far from here. My house is far from here. His is farther even. And her is farther yet. Farthest yet. Anyway, back to this thing. So it works. B is a candidate. That does not mean that B is the answer. Do you understand? Let's, let's just hold on because we have to go through all five of them and we have to make sure that the other others do not work. Because in a situation like this, in most cases, we have to try at least twice before we narrow down to the right answer. Do you understand? We may have to go two rounds before we can narrow, narrow down to one. 
So don't be hasty. Don't take B yet. We don't know yet. Okay? Let's go on to C. Just keep in mind that B, B, B works so far. Let's move on to C and I'm going to pick up a little bit of speed here. I'm going with too much of a leisurely pace. C says x times y squared is less than x. x times y squared is less than x. x is negative one half. y squared will be negative one fourth squared, which will give us negative one half times positive one sixteenth, which will boil down to positive negative one thirty second. That is not what I had in my notes. Oh, it is. And question is, is this quantity less than x, which is negative one half? And the answer is no. No, it is not. That is not true. That is not true because negative one, one thirty second would be something very close to zero. You see, this is half, this is one quarter, this is one eighth, this is going to be one sixteenth. One thirty second is going to be very close to zero. And that turn to quantity is actually bigger than negative one half because it is closer to zero. This quantity is much closer to zero than its negative half. Negative half is here. Negative one quarter, negative one eight, negative one sixteen, and so forth. You get the idea. That is that is wrong. C is not the answer. That's good. Let's look at let's look at D. And if it turns out, well, I was going to say if D is also wrong, then we know what the answer is. But it, I just realized that we have actually five answer choices, don't we? Okay, I'm going to stop yapping and just keep working. So that was C. C does not work. Let's look at D. D says x times y is less than y squared. x times y is less than y squared. x is negative one half. y is negative one quarter. Negative one half times negative one quarter will give us positive one eighth. And the question is, is that less than? Is that less than y squared, which would be? y squared, which will be negative one fourth squared, which is positive one sixteen. Uh, one sixteen. Is positive one eighth less than than one sixteen? The answer is no. Of course not. How can one eighth? How can one eighth be less than one sixteen? As a matter of fact, one eighth is twice the amount of one sixteen. Just like one half, one half is twice the amount of one quarter. Because two, two quarters will make one half, similarly, two sixteenths will make one eighth. This is wrong. The answer is not D. Let's hope that we can also rule out E. That's what it is. This problem is not difficult. Problem is not difficult. The reason why people get this kind of question wrong is because they do not pay attention, they are too hasty, and uh, they mess up in, in their calculation. You just have to take your time. X times Y, last one says, is less than X squared. X times Y. Let's quickly do it here. I'm not going to do it x times, oh, I'll do it all. Negative one half times negative one quarter, x times y, negative times negative will become positive, and it will be one eighth. Is that less than x squared? x squared here is negative one half squared, which is going to give us positive one fourth. Is one eighth, is one eighth less than one quarter? Blast it, bloody hell, it is, it is true. I was hoping I was hoping that we'll rule it out, but it is true. The bloody thing is true, which means we have to go second round. Which means we have to go second round. Let's go one more round, shall we? Round round two. But in round two, we only have to try B and E. I don't know why I raised E. I just had E on the blackboard. I don't know why I raised it. Let's do round two, and let's plug in the whole number this time. Let's plug in whole number. We are told that X is less than Y, and Y is, in, y is in turn is less than zero. Let's put in negative one for Y and negative two. And E says, we don't have to try all of them, just now there are only two contenders left in the ring. There are only two content contenders left at, at this point in the ring, and we just have to figure out who is the winner. So back to E. E says, x times y is less than x squared. x times y. x is negative 2. y is negative 1. Negative 2 times negative 1 is positive 2. And is that less than... Is that less than negative 2 squared, which is going to be positive 4. Is 2 less than 4? Of course it is. Of course it is. Which means E works. Still, it does not mean that the answer is E. Maybe B also works. In which case, we may have to do something else. We may have to create a different number. So let's not be hasty. We have not been able to rule out anything so far. Let's look at B. Let's look at B. What does B say?
What was B? I can't, I can't find B. Oh, y minus 1 equals less, y minus 1 is less than 0. I just want to make sure I have it right. I'm going to look at the B. y minus 1, y minus 1 is less than x. So let's see what it gives us. y is negative 1. So negative 1 minus a 1, which is going to give us negative 2. And x is negative 2. We plugged in 2 for negative, negative 2 for x, then B. So is, is negative 2 less than negative 2? Is negative 2 less than negative 2? The answer is no. No, that is not true. There we go. We found the answer. Answer is E. We had two two contenders left at the end, and we just knocked down. We just knocked out rather. We just knocked out B, which means E is our hero. He is the winner. If you're interested in percentile, I have it written here somewhere. There we go. This was 40 percentile. Three fifths of the people who took the exam got this question wrong. So we're done. That we're done with this question. But I want to quickly make a couple of quick, uh, one quick comment here as to what happened uh, when I was doing the problem myself. So this is how I did it. I found the answer at the end, very at the very end. And I thought, and I thought that I was being clever by starting out with fraction because in most cases, in a situation like this, we do have to plug in twice, sometimes even three times before we narrow down to one answer choices. And in that case, what you usually do is you plug in a whole number first, an integer first, and then the fraction. And in the second round, you narrow down further by doing the fraction. So I said, well, why should I do, why should I do integer first and then try to narrow down further with the fra fractions? I'm so clever, why don't I just start with the fraction? So I started with fractions. And then I was curious. I was just curious as to what would have happened. What would have happened had I started out with negative 2 and negative 1 to begin with? So I tried all the other answer choices. And it turns out that had we tried with the integers first, negative 2 and negative 1, we could have found the right answer by just by doing one round. We, we, there was no need here to plug in negative 1 half and negative 1 quarter. So, so much for my being trying to be uh, so bright. Do you understand? So it was a waste of time. Had you plugged in, if, if you try plugging in negative 2 and negative 1 and all the other answer choices, then you will see none of them work. This is the only one that works. So we could have saved ourselves a great deal of time, great deal of effort, great deal of work by not having to do the work that we did with negative one half and negative one quarter. But hey, as they say, c'est la vie, mon ami. I'll see you tomorrow, okay? Bye now.